Western Rinox. I don't know how I'm going to do with this terrain. The weather forecast is all over the place. So I've decided to expect nothing. And be prepared for everything. Come join me for a little adventure alone in the wild. So I've planned a 22 kilometer route in the western side of the Rinox. Now the Rinox are notoriously rough and rugged and with this part being away from even the main paths and the main peaks, I'm expecting it to be a little bit challenging. The weather forecast for this weekend is ranging from light wind and rain on the regular forecast over at Barmouth Bay over there to crazy heavy rain, gale force, 50 mile per hour winds, and thunderstorms and everything on mountain weather information service. Now MW IS tends to give the worst case doom and gloom scenario, so I don't know what to expect this weekend. I bought my hilly, which I didn't expect to be lugging about on a summer trip in July, but if those 50 mile per hour winds do materialize, I'm gonna be really glad to have that. So I'm currently only one kilometer into my journey. Look at it, we're heading up there. I'm gonna head through some ferns, so I'm gonna have to put my waterproofs on to keep the ticks off me, which I'm really not looking forward to because it is so hot today. Absolutely sweltering. But I'm gonna have a look over there and see if I can find some waterfalls. And then the plan for the rest of the day is to head up to a little peak called Foil Du. I think it's 477 meters. And we'll see about pitching somewhere up there for tonight. Let's go. Okay, so this is what we're dealing with here. Oh. Oh. That's a pretty little pool. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. in here so I think I'm gonna hang out here a little while drink loads of water and I'm gonna wear my wet stuff under my waterproof on the way back out of this mess of tangled stuff so hot right let's go thank you waterfall yeah. that's my eye height they're as tall as me there we are that's the way out <sighs> That was such a beautiful way to start my little trip. So we're on our way, heading up now, hopefully. I don't know what the way is like. And the weather for today is good. The forecast is good. No storms or anything today or tonight, hopefully, which is grand. I mean, I've always wanted to camp in a thunderstorm, like down low in the woods, but I really don't fancy it up high in the mountains. Not one little bit. Ugh. So I guess, We'll just have to play it by ear, see how it pans out and reevaluate if and when the weather comes in tomorrow. That's Snowden, peeking his big giant head over. Hi Snowden. Oh, this is gorgeous. I've been very fortunate so far to have some kind of a path up here, which doesn't often happen in the Rinox. Hey fella. It is seven o'clock, we're up at 300 meters. I just checked the temperature and it is 25 degrees C in the shade, which I'm discovering is way too hot for me. I mean, my eyelids are sweating, which is a really weird sensation. Look at that. What is that a record? Is that a plane wreck or something? all this stuff. Jesus. Smashed to bits. I've been very lucky and I took a risk and I left it to the last stream to fill up on water for the night because it's so hot and I just don't want to carry even more weight because water's so heavy and there is just enough of flow of water that I can fill up. So if there wasn't, I would have had to go back down. Yay! <laughs> Hands free. Right, I'm fully loaded. Let's get up there. windy up here so 
we're gonna head down just a little way, get back out the wind. Let's have a look at the views first though. That's the way knock back. The sea. That's where we've come from down there. Ain't it gorgeous? Let's get set up. So today has been a 4.4 kilometer day. That's all. I can't believe it. It felt like so much more than that, I guess, because it was so hot. But I've got to where I wanted to get to for the first night. So that is absolutely amazing. So we're at 440 meters at the moment. It's breezy on and off. Actually, it's quite gusty sometimes. So I'm glad I've got the hilly. And just for peace of mind, really, because I really want to relax this weekend. And I realize this isn't everyone's idea of relaxation, but for me, it's sitting and watching the clouds roll by and listening to rain on the tent and watching the sun go down. Sleeping, not having an alarm. And it's like I get to go back to a more primitive way of being as well, where my concerns are like, find water, make a shelter for the night, navigate this terrain. And it's just like a reset for me. It's a bit mad because it's still light. It's quarter past 10 and there's such a beautiful glow over the mountains. Yeah, I am Marvin. I think I'll get my dinner going and just watch it get dark. I've just been round to check on all my guy lines, tighten them up. A bit breezy out here. So I'm gonna finish my drink and then get to bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. Bye. Yeah, I'm already glad I bought the hilly. Good morning, wild ones. I had such a sort of restless, broken sleep last night. I didn't get to sleep till about half two. And then I was just constantly waking up with the sound of the wind. But the tents held up really, really well. I woke up quite early, like seven, and felt really rubbish and just went back to sleep. So we've got to get on now. Ooh. We're going to head south today down to a 583 metre peak. And then after that, I want to start heading a bit lower just in case of thunderstorms. It is a lot cooler today, about 17 degrees. So it'd be much nicer for hiking in. Right, let's go. We're here on the summit of Foydu, 477 meters, and we're heading over in that direction. It's such a moody day, I love it. Look at those mountains. Hill breeze. Wow, this is steep. You know what, dry stone walls are not easy with 17 kilos on your back. Uh, navigating on this one is, uh, pretty difficult actually. Constantly having to check, change direction. It's like a maze. We're heading over in that direction. It's so jumbled and hickledy pickledy looking. Make our way around there somehow. Ooh. So that there behind is our next hill. That hill, it does look like an almighty slog, doesn't it? I don't know if we're gonna get up there and back down today. Seems like a bit of a stretch. Well, let's plod on and see what happens. It's half two now, so we've got over like seven, eight hours of daylight. It just looks so big. Hmm. Oh. Hi, friend. So 24 hours in now. A little isolation report. Haven't seen a single person. Not one since I got here. Absolute, pure, beautiful isolation. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's quite something, you know. Ooh, stuck. Come on, dude. Weirdest path ever. I need to stop and have a little rest soon and decide what I'm gonna do. 
make a plan. Just stopping off here for a little rest and some snacks. Look at that gorgeous view of the Rinogs behind. So we've got this big old slog here up this hill now. I'm gonna try it. We're about just under five kilometers into today's hike. So about a third of the way through the route total. The only thing that's concerning me about this is that I need to be up and down before I pitch for the night because I'm just not gonna sleep well if I'm worried about thunderstorms. So I do need to get up and down tonight to the other side, but I think I can do that. And then tomorrow we're gonna go looking for a beautiful waterfall as well. So that'll be really nice. Right, I'm gonna get some food in me and I will see you guys on the way. Right, we're going. It's four o'clock, we're at 220 meters elevation, 360 to go. Let's do this, 300 meters. Can you hear that water under the ground? That's the stream I was gonna fill up on. I can't get to the water. Oh yeah, look, I can get to it here. So the path on the map is taking me like up there. Righto, well, that's not happening. Let's find a different way around. I mean, no, even this you can't get through. Nuts. Hi, friend. Nice tail. I like it. 400. Yes, you have a wonderful tail also. Oh, look. There are cows over there. They don't seem particularly interested though. So that's good because they give me the heebie-jeebies. Oh dear, look, that one really splattered. 500 meters, last hush. I'll see you up there. Oh, look at this. I did it. I was over there and I looked up at this big hill I thought it's too big for me for today but here I am on top of it <laughs> so that is where we camped last night we've come all the way down into the valley and it's all zigzagged our way up to here 7.5 kilometers in today so far and uh Yes, I am pretty cream crackered actually. So I'm gonna follow this wall down, get lower and uh, find somewhere to pitch. But I guess we'll have a few kilometer walk yet, so. This is the only water source for a while now. So I think it's gonna have to do. It's 6.30. If I find something fresher and faster flowing, I'll swap it, but it'll do for just in case. Yay. That's a real weight off actually. Now that I've got water and I know I can just plonk down when I find somewhere suitable. It is 20 to seven currently, and we're at 350 meters, so getting lower. That's where we just come from. I can't wait to pitch my tent, chill out. This is gorgeous around here. I'm gonna try and find somewhere flat. Right, let's get this tent down. Oh my God, look at this. I just turned around to find this. Do you think I've stolen their bed for the night? This evening is absolutely beautiful. It is so peaceful. There's not a whisper of wind. And if I just peek over these ferns here, I can see the mountains on the other side of the bay and shafts of light coming through, lighting up the water. It's just magical. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm so pleased because I wasn't expecting stuff like this this weekend. Could it be more beautiful? So today has been a 9.9 .9 kilometer day. We've come all the way down south from the first peak we were on yesterday and we are 14.3 kilometers total into the whole route. So well over halfway, which is amazing. We are pitched up at 237 meters at the moment. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a cozy nook for the evening, snuggle and sleep and eat. Oh, and just look at all this gorgeousness. Seriously, I am so lucky. And you know, night two, and I've still not seen a single other human being, which is madness. I mean, I have heard signs of life on the farms that you pass through and stuff, tractors and things like that, but no other hikers at all. That has to be one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. 
15. Right, I'm clocking off, so I'll see you in the morning, guys, and we'll go find this waterfall. Bye. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to day three. Oh, it's beautiful. None of this crazy weather is materializing so far. I had a lovely sleep last night, seven hours, so feeling good. So today we're heading on to the waterfall, which looking at the map looks to be only a couple of kilometers. I don't know what the train's gonna be like. On the map, there is some bogginess marked on along the route I've got to take, so. <laughs> That's always fun. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Ow! Again! Freaking ankle keeps going! Ah. Them sheep are like, let's get away from this lunatic. Oh. Problem is, when it's this overgrown, aside from the tick issue, can't see what you're standing on. That's where we came from yesterday. So the way I've marked on my map is to now follow this wall all the way to the waterfalls, but it's just not possible. There's no way through there. So we're gonna have to go a different way. We'll get there. No bugs so far, so that is fantastic. Really spiky though. <laughs> Ow! Oh, hey! We're out of the ferns. That was 45 minutes of pure ferns up to here. But we're out. And what I desperately need is water now. I've only got this little bit left that I had left over from camp. I wanna chug what's left in here, but I'm trying to save it just in case. I'm sure we'll be able to find some. This is the problem in summer. Winter, there's water just everywhere. But summer, a lot of the water sources dried out oh yeah look look at all that water this is so beautiful down here i followed the river along because the reservoir wasn't very accessible and here i've got fresh blue green flowing water oh it's so gorgeous this is the first water that i've come upon since last night seven o'clock 18 hours ago so i'm gonna stop here for lunch and a rest have a little paddle just enjoy it and then get going again try and find this waterfall on a campsite and I didn't fancy going through a campsite yes I'm going around a different way we're taking a long way again through the woods and we'll see if we can come at it from the other side and we've got gorgeous views as well of the big boy that we reached the top of yesterday he's looking all majestic with his head in the clouds today right let's see if we can get around here Ow! oh wow look at this for a drop off Gnarly. Hi. Hi. Well, I found the falls and oh, they're gorgeous, but there's just people everywhere around here. All over the place, I guess, because of the campsite and it's the weekend. So I'm gonna find somewhere to have a little dip because I'm roasting and the water is so nice today and then we'll get going north 
because I do need to head north a fair way today to make it back to where I started tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Let's start heading north a bit. I want to get a few kilometers in before I find somewhere to pitch tonight. I'm just hiking in my swim stuff because <laughs> there doesn't seem much point in changing right now. So I've got a few more kilometers north. I've got some road walking now, which is easy and quick and much appreciated at the end of a trip like this. And look at these views. It's just beautiful. Look at this. It's just perfect for night three. I've got these gorgeous views of the Rinogs. Hello, Halsey. For night three at uh, 137 meters and views wise this is absolutely perfect i can see where we started out two days ago and i can see where we went up and then pitched on night one up there so today i have traveled 10.6 kilometers which brings the total for the trip to 24.9 kilometers so by the time i get back to the car tomorrow it'll be over 25k which is amazing there's been a fair bit of detouring and changing routes and stuff today but i'm really glad because it's taken me to such beautiful places so i've had a good tick check over and i've got my nice dry clothes on everything that's needed to stay dry has stayed dry that's thanks to using pack liners i have one in both the top and bottom sections of my bag and having all my stuff in dry bags as well it's like heaven up here tonight it's not even the slightest breeze as you can tell by all the midges you know i've been to the rinog so many times now and i kind of feel like i must have seen most of it but just sitting here I'm looking at that peak and I'm like, oh, I need to get up there. I don't want to go and explore what's up behind that ridge. There's still loads of it I haven't seen yet. It's kind of magical, this place. I'm just loving watching the clouds roll by tonight. They're so floofy and billowy looking. So this trip has been so much more than I thought it would be. I thought the weather was going to be terrible. I thought it was going to be uncomfortable. I thought the terrain was going to be really difficult. And I kind of had a feeling it might be one of those that I'd end up going home after the first night or something. So I came into it with zero expectations for this one. Actually, it's been totally amazing. And it's gone 10 o'clock, so I suppose I better get my bed ready. You know, I've been sitting here for hours, just watching and listening. And it just never gets boring. I think there's a lot to be said for managing expectations. Because it can be so easy to get carried away imagining how perfect and wonderful things are going to be. And then having those feelings of disappointment when things just aren't as great as you imagined. But often I find the opposite to be true too. When I don't expect so much or I expect the worst, the universe hands me all kinds of beautiful experiences. So I guess sometimes it's good to just let go, go with the flow and see where it takes you.